Today, we're going over three effects on Adobe Premiere Pro that I wish I knew sooner. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. What is up? Welcome back. Pete here. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Pete Gottschalk, content producer at Major League Baseball. And as the title stated, I want to go over a couple effects that I wish I knew when I first started editing videos way back in, you know, 2016, 17, when I started this whole journey at the beginning of college. These are three effects that are very simple, very easy to apply to your videos or transitions or anything. And they're three effects that I use all the time now. And look, if you're a more experienced editor, you might know these already, these might be easy to you, but these are just three things, like I said, that I wish that I knew back in, you know, er the early days of my editing, because I think they're things that make my videos and, and my, my colleagues' videos better even to this day. As such simple effects, right? So, so let's get into it. The first effect I want to go over is effect that I actually learned on a video from Peter Sorellis. If you are in the sports content world, you probably know his videos. But this effect is a transition and it's called additive dissolve. Now, I don't know about y'all, but whenever I was starting in Premiere Pro, all those like preset transitions or video flips or like wipes and stuff were always really corny to me. They looked like they were made for kind of like, you know, the basic editor making like an eye, like they, they felt really like Windows Movie Maker iMovie to me. But this one, I didn't know existed until like two, three years ago. And it's great for transitions and you can pair it up with a couple sound effects and I think it really does a good job. Basically what Additive Dissolve is, is it's just a simple basic fading of clips together and then it's gonna add like kind of like this white hot flash, almost kind of like a camera bulb effect in a way. Um, but it's really easy to use on Premiere Pro, which is why I use it all the time still. So let me hop in my computer and I'll show y'all how I would use it. So I have two clips here of Ronald Acuna Jr. digging into the box. So if I do this, That's him digging in slow motion. And then here is a little single and a bat flip. Let's take that video right there. And then as you can see, we've got it going in between like that. Normal cut and you'll go into your effects. Additive, dissolve. See, and that's the default, so it's gonna just fade them together and kind of add a flash. But to make this effect good, what you wanna do, zoom in a little bit on your timeline there and just make it quick so it kind of looks like a little, you know, like I said, camera flash. To make this effect even better, what you can do is go in to your, you know, sound effects folder here. I have one a big folder that I've been accumulating over the years. And sometimes I'll use this little plastic click in edits and right here. There, you could also do like a, a camera flash, for example, but those are things, you know, that you can spice up this transition with a little bit. You could add a zoom, you could nest these two clips together, zoom in, but the additive dissolve effect is just something that I find myself using a lot in simple Instagram edits, hype videos, because it's just so easy to use, right? So the next effect that I wish I knew sooner is actually an audio effect. And the longer you are in this game or this industry of, of you know, content creation, the more you'll understand how important sound design is. And I think like as a young editor, and I think like as a young editor, people are so obsessed with the visuals but increasingly as time has gone on you know there's been so many great hype videos with sound great sound design and that really makes a difference it's half of the video at times this one is an audio effect and it's a pretty commonly used one um, if you're an experienced editor and this is something that I wish I knew sooner um, and that is going to be low pass and basically what low pass is going to do is it's going to make your audio sound like it's coming from a room over if that makes sense so like if you're at a concert and you go to the bathroom and you can still hear the doom doom music that's kind of the effect low pass is going to give you and as you can imagine this is great for making the the viewer feel like they are in kind of an alternate reality um, maybe you go into slow motion maybe there's like you're going into some detail shots and you want to mute the crowd a little bit but still have that kind of atmosphere low pass is great for that and if you are an experienced editor you're definitely gonna know about this one but here I'm gonna show you a real-life example using the two clips we just got slide the audio from that hit in bump it up to eight Let's listen to this audio first. So that's what it's gonna sound like raw and out of camera. And then if we take low pass here and filter in EQ, slide it over. 
gonna sound very muted. Now, if you want to change how much the, the audio is muted, what you have to do is select your audio here, go up to effect controls, and you can drag this up or down. The higher you go on the cutoff, the more normal it's gonna sound, if that makes sense. So keep that in mind. What I tend to use this effect for is when I go into slow motion, and like I said, I'll like make, make the viewer feel like they're in an alternate reality. So here, I'm gonna show you how I would do that. The first thing I'm going to do here is right click on the clip and go down to show clip keyframes and do time remapping. And then whenever Ronald flips his bat here, I'm going to take this, make a keyframe in the time remapping, drag it down to 40 because it's shot in 60. And if you know how to t uh, speed ramp, you, you'll, know, you'll know what I'm doing here. Get that to the, the speed you want it at. I'm gonna move it up just a little. There. So now that we have that keyframed, and this is a very rudimentary example, I'm going to go back into my audio effect controls, drag this up to where it would sound normal. And we want to go from the normal sound and normal speed into like the, the muted sound and slow motion. So drag it to the end of your keyframe here and then just take this down to like a thousand. So when we watch this back, That's what it's gonna sound like. Sometimes I'll add a zoom whenever it gets slow. I'll add like a whoosh effect if I'm zooming in. You can really pair it all together to enhance the viewer's experience, right? But low pass, definitely effect I recommend everyone start using if you haven't already. Okay, and the final effect I want to go over is the transform effect. And transform, what are you talking about? Can't I do that in my effect controls in my motion tab? Yes but you're not gonna get motion blur and motion blur in edits or movies or anything is, is very important to, again, enhance the viewer's experience. And motion blur in your hype videos and your Instagram social edits can really be used in a clever way to hide certain things, make really cool transitions, and you, you can just do a lot more things if you have a good motion blur turned on. And famously enough, when you're using the motion tab in your effects controls on Premiere Pro, you can't really get that, that natural motion blur applied like you can in After Effects with a simple click of a button. For the longest time, when I was starting as an editor, all I was doing was using After Effects for motion blur. And it turns out you didn't need to do that. <laughs> what I'm gonna do for this example is I'm going to nest this clip first with the speed ramp because you can't actually keyframe on a speed ramped clip. If you are familiar with speed ramping, you'll know this. Just nest it. Cunha nest. And then I'm gonna go back over to my effects tab, take my transform, and we can go down and find it here. And the shutter angle right here is going to be your motion blur. So I'm gonna turn that up to 180. And then what I'm going to do is zoom in when it goes from real speed to slow speed. So we're gonna find that moment. Right when he flips the bat, go up to I'm gonna make a keyframe at anchor point position, scale, and then when it gets slow, maybe a couple keyframes and add the zoom in. I still want it to be just a little faster, you know? You want this to be a subtle kind of it's a quick motion, so you want it to be up. Now, if you wanna make these keyframes a little bit more natural, select these, go easy ease, and then do easy ease in for the back ones, and easy ease out for these. And that is just going to make it a little bit more of a gradual. You can do that for any keyframes. Um, highly recommend using that as well, a little extra tidbit of info there. So that's a very rudimentary example, I understand, but if you zoom in, it's a very quick transition, you're gonna get this motion blur, right? So if you use just the motion tab on your under your effects control, you're not gonna get this motion blur. And like I said, if you want to change the shutter, like if you wanna make it, you know, 90 degrees, for example, just drag that shutter angle if you want less motion blur. If you want more, you can up it back up to 180. This can be used on zoom in, zoom outs to hide a lot of things for transitions, and it looks really cool, it looks really natural. Pair it with your sound design, whooshes, whoosh ins, whoosh outs, your atmosphere, your low pass sounds, and I think it really creates a good cocktail of kind of like this, this alternate reality. Look, those are my three effects um, that I wish I knew sooner. I understand if you are a experienced editor, you know, this might not mean much to you, but I want to help y'all out. If you're just starting, 
as a content creator, as a videographer, as a filmmaker, whatever it be, I wanna help y'all out. So again, like and subscribe if you enjoyed. I hope I was able to provide some value for y'all young editors out there. Look, we're gonna keep the momentum of this channel going. I appreciate y'all and I'll see y'all in the next one.